Now a word from one of our partners. If you are unlucky enough to be on the losing end of a major lawsuit and you own a real estate business, you would have wished that the thought of protecting your assets had come up in the conversation before the judge rendered his decision and your fate. So act now while you can. Go to peer2peerrealestate.com forward slash asset protection. That's peer, the number two, peerrealestate.com forward slash asset protection. And you'll see the great products that this company, Royal Legal Solutions, has to protect your assets. Don't forget, peer-to-peerrealestate.com forward slash asset protection. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Peer to Peer Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Willie Morales. And on today's show, I have Stephanie Badillo. And let me tell you a little bit about Stephanie. Stephanie has been in the luxury interior design, development, and real estate industry for over 30 years. She started her design business in 1991, which led her through a career designing and developing both residential and commercial properties in the United States and Canada. Her company, Badillo Development Group, started in 2008 and specializes in sustainable, passive solar, and net positive development. You can find Stephanie at Badillo Development Group. That's B-A-D-I-L-L-O developmentgroup.com. Stephanie, thank you so much for being on Peer to Peer. How are you? Thanks for having me, Willie. Listen, I, I'm you know, we met uh, March 1st, and uh, folks, this way you get a little bit of history of Stephanie. She told me that she started her real estate business back in the 90s, she was an entrepreneur, she told me, at the age of five. If you could believe that, <laughs> I'm impressed because I didn't start my entrepreneurial brain until I was in my mid-40s. So, Stephanie, tell us about that process of you as a young woman or a young girl. What, how did you know that that was in your blood so at, at such a young age? I mean, I just really honestly think that I was born in, to be an entrepreneur. You know, um, I come from a, a, a group of my family. Uh, the women, in, you know, the group of women in my family are very entrepreneurial in their spirits, and I think I just inherited that gene. So uh, basically by the time I could walk and talk, I already knew that I was going to be an entrepreneur. I turned my Easy Bake Oven into a business, um, selling cakes to my fellow students in kindergarten. I uh, took my backyard swing set and made it into a uh, like a, co- a mini Coney Island where I was charging admission fees and things like that. And my mind was always going. I took over the, my art class in school, and I was actually to the point where the teacher gave me my own class once a week where I would teach origami or have a different topic every week. So I already knew, uh, Willie, that uh, I had it in my blood. <laughs> That's an, that, Again, I am so stunned. when I You're like a, a female version of Warren Buffett. He knew he wanted to be a, <laughs> a, a stock picker, I think, at 10 or 11. So you, you're in that class, you know. We just got to get you into the billionaire class soon. So, <laughs> thank you, know, you thank but, you. <laughs> I'm so, working on it. <laughs> all right, listen, it's, it's, it's okay. So how did you – what made you get into the real estate field? What, how did you get into that process? What was the steps for you to get in? Well, as, as you mentioned, I started my uh, interior design business in 1991, Stephanie Badillo Interiors, and then in about 2004, I was just getting into the multi-unit uh, residential sales for new development properties, and then I decided that if I was going to become a real estate developer, because I already had plans as I was working um, for other developers, their properties, that uh, eventually that I was going to want to become one myself, that I would need to get my real estate license in order to uh, receive commissions from properties that I would develop and then also to have a better understanding of real estate because I spent a lot of my early years focusing more on my interior design and architectural career that um, I didn't really get as much into real estate as I started to find myself uh, being part of the new development process and working with uh, real estate developers that I really needed to have a, a better understanding of actually how real estate itself works. So, again, just re-educating myself and can, my continuing education. So, you know, and that's uh, an interesting point about your education. So how did you learn the real estate business? Did you learn it as you went along, you know, with your interior design? And in other words, did you learn as you went? In other words, you're doing one project after another and you're like picking it up and you go, oh, okay, now I know the next time not to do this, the next time I need to do that. Is that how you learned the process of real estate? Uh, yes, a little bit. I mean, in the interior design architectural world and working with residential clients and on their condominiums and, and you know, private residences and then also in the uh, office industry, which is where I was uh, conducting my interior design practice, I uh, learned little bits and pieces of real estate, you know, about, you know, just parts that we all 
all know as real estate professionals, which is, you know, the certificate of occupancies and working with building permits and, you know, getting all of those types of things and working, you know, the difference between working in a co-op and in a condo. And so I, little by little, I started to learn about real estate by default. But by the time I got into working on actual multi-unit condominium complexes, which were like 300 units and up uh, with developers, I started to understand and working with real estate professionals and helping them to be able to sell the apartments once we finished designing them. I wanted to, you know, I had a desire to really try to understand it from A to Z, like how does real estate really work? How does real property work? And so that's kind of when I said, you know, I've learned enough. I've learned as much as I could as a designer, but now I want to take it a step further and really get to understand real estate as a business. So you pretty much over the years from, you know, starting your design business in 1991 to your development group in 2008. So in between those years, you pretty much just took one step at a time and you evolved from, you know, your design business to now being in the development field. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, correct. It was like almost like a natural progression for me. Right. And, you know, because, it, you know, when some certain people stay in one niche and being in, uh, as an interior designer in that field, did you feel that you needed uh, to expand your, your brand, so to speak? Yes and no. I mean, initially it happened because of all of the recessions that occurred. I mean, when I started my business in 1991, I was only 22 years old, and it, it was that, that was that first big recession that was going on. And you know, uh, so I was constantly, uh, you know, just switching gears and just, you know, as a as an entrepreneur, just always finding a way to solve a problem that existed at that whatever particular t- time frame we were in, and then just trying to, you know, find a solution for that. So then I was bouncing back and forth between residential interior design and commercial interior design, depending upon the way the wind was blowing and the way the economy was going. I always found, uh, you know, was able to make a living in either residential or commercial. So I don't, I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> no, it does. It does. So once you got into the field of real estate, was it difficult for you, especially, you know, it male dominated, you know, did the men of that, you know, real estate take you serious or how did you, you know, get through that maze, so to speak, for lack of a better phrase? Well, I mean, initially when I got my real estate license in 2004, I was just looking, you know, to, at that time to, like I said, educate myself um, in the real estate business. And I didn't really put it to use until I started working on multi-unit projects. There I was entering as a designer, working with a developer, helping them to choose, you know, design the kitchens and the bathrooms and the interior finishes and selecting those items. So in that particular role, I didn't, I didn't have any like feelings about, you know, a male-dominated field. It wasn't until, you know, I started doing project management and walking in on these large projects, you know, with my hard hat, and I was really the person who was, had to do the problem solving. And, you know, here comes Stephanie, you know, who is she? You know, and I'd be dressed up because, you know, most of the contractors, obviously, they're, they're wearing their work, work clothes, and I'm wearing my work clothes too, but I could be very dressed up in a suit because I've got meetings later, but I have to stop by the job site because I'm managing all these multi-unit projects. Mm-hmm. And I would be whistled by the contractors, you know, you know, you look sexy and all the stuff. Yeah. Not realizing oh, man. That I was the person, you know what I mean? Not realizing it's me. Like I'm the person that's coming here to solve, you know, to solve the problem. You know, there's, there's something wrong with you, the, you know, the refrigerators, the sub-zero refrigerators, or there was a design problem or whatever it was. Then I started to feel that I wasn't being taken seriously as a woman because I think they were surprised, you know, when I showed up that I was the person, I was the representative now sent because I, I designed it and I'm whole team behind me, you know, we were the ones that were responsible for making those critical decisions, financial decisions. So then I started to experience that more in the development side of business. Right. You know, and it's, I think, you know, now, you know, that I started this show like a year ago, I, for me, and it's it's a conscious decision to try to interview as much women as I can. I just don't see, you know, when I go to a lot of these real estate meetings, it might be like a five to one ratio, uh, men to women. Do you think women might find, uh, getting into the real estate field a, a difficult proposition for them? Or they're just not, what I'm trying to say. In other words, do you think it's just too difficult to, for them to try to get in and not knowing that it could be easy for them to get in if they meet the right people? 
Okay, so I've been doing it now for ten years in terms of real estate development. So right. I would say I would say in real estate in general, women tend and still do today go on the residential side because they're you know it's sort of more feminine. You know, like there's a lot of more women real estate brokers and uh, salespeople uh, in residential. But I would say commercial, the commercial side of real estate. There's a lot of women entering now, myself included. But it's still a very male dominated industry side of the business. And also with the development side, there's not a lot of women. I think it's me and two other women, and there's a lot of other women coming up as developers now, but it's still a very, very male-dominated side of, of the industry. But I, I think that it's changing, and I think that it certainly I hope to, to be part of that change, you know, but yeah, it is hard. There's a lot of obstacles. There's not being taken seriously. There's always having to stand up for yourself and learning how to, how to, to really have a thick skin because you are dealing with, you know, a lot of men who may not, you've got to prove to them you know, that you're credible, that you're credible and that you're in, in while remaining professional and not letting you. Right. And, so I think that right. those, those are some and, of the challenges, yeah. Yeah, and, and plus, you know, I think now at this stage of your career, we could say that you know what you're doing. And and I say better than some men because you have the experience, you have the knowledge, you got the team behind you. Now, I wanted to talk about your team. How did you go about picking your current team. Now, people always say when you pick a partner, it's like dating. Would you consider that the same in the real estate <laughs> field for you? <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot, uh-huh. but I, I had to ask. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know if it's like dating. I guess, yeah, I guess, you know, because you're spending a lot of hours together, you mean, and you're, you're, you're you know, it's like, you know, you mar- like somebody who marries, you and your husband are running a business together, and it's like, it's hard to separate the, the two between, you know, you know work and, and pleasure. But um, I would say not really for me. I mean, I usually pick and I like to collaborate and team up with people who fill a role in, that I can't do. So in other words, I specialize in design and d- development so that those are my strengths. So I like to partner with people that are going to add to my strengths, you know, and we add to one another's strengths. So that's kind of what I look for in a partner right. is somebody who's going to add value to what I already have. Or what or services that I'm already providing. So what what services am I not providing? What am I not really good at? And then I look for for a partner based on that. Okay, that, I like that. Okay, so if you're an expert at certain things, but maybe I, I hate to say lacking, but let's say not experienced, but you know person B that you're interviewing is experienced in it. So then you can see that you might be able to collaborate because you have both of you have experience in certain industries of real estate. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, you know, specialize or we're an expert in that particular area. So together we join forces. We become we're stronger together than we are individually. Right. Okay. So in your biography that you had sent me a, a day earlier, so you're working on a new venture. So could you tell us more about that and where does your company fit in and how can the people you're working with benefit, if that makes sense? Well, um, I'm excited about my new venture. Again, it goes back to me being a problem solver. I'm always looking for a problem that needs to be solved or something that isn't being addressed or just taking our, you know, since I've been in the business for 30 years, the evolution of our business and, and the evolution of time and the evolution of how things have changed you know, in the industry. So my new venture is called Ready, uh, Move-In Ready Solutions, and it's addressing sort of a, a problem that's been happening for the last couple of years, commercial real estate arena, which is, you know, re- the retail stores that we see now, you know, a lot of vacancies all over in New York City and beyond, particularly in, in, in Manhattan and in New York City. So I've come up with a solution to remedy that. We just had a article in the Commercial Observer this week, actually, that, you know, they talked about uh, New York City fining landlords for having these empty retail spaces too long, whether it's because they're greedy and they're holding out for better tenants or they're, they don't really care because they're landlords and they own the property and they could take advantage of tax breaks and, you know, just leave the spaces vacant. But the problem there is it's it's leaving the neighborhoods looking abandoned and encouraging, you know, vandalism and all kinds of things like that, and especially in an area of Manhattan where you have real estate property is valued so high and you have luxury condominiums and offices all within the same neighborhood. I mean, somebody's going to buy a multi-million dollar condominium or somebody's going to sign a five to ten year long-term lease in a, in a commercial office space, they don't want to walk around the neighborhood to, with all of these empty retail stores and empty retail spaces. It's, it's not a good look for the neighborhood. So I came up with a, a solution called Moving Solutions where, you know, my myself and my team, 
uh, we'll go in and create, you know, an open house. I mean, I, I want to steer away from the term pop-up, which I've been using, but it, it's actually short-term space is really the proper term. And, you know, I've partnered with the, some some people to who have been already providing this short-term space solution for landlords. So what we're doing is going in and finding new purposes for these empty retail spaces because now the city is going to find them if they don't, and they're probably going to take away their, you know, their ability to take those tax credits. And so now they're going to now be pushed to actually lease it to somebody. So who is your ideal tenant? Who do you want to be in there? We can come in. We'll do an open house like they do residential, an open house mm-hmm. sort of party where, you know, it's going to be theme-related. Um, whatever the thing may be, to attract, you know, those those top, let's say, potential tenants that you would like to have lease that space. And uh, we'll do it that way, either through the party or through the uh, short-term space company, mm-hmm. which is going to then hopefully, and I've already had these conversations with them, that there is a certain percentage. We haven't had, they haven't had enough experience because it's only been a year or two old where the short-term space actually does convert into longer-term lease. So now if it does, you know, for example, American Express was one of the, the people who used the short-term space for a party, and then they were interested in the property, and then they ended up signing a long, longer-term lease. But the landlord. Mm-hmm. So that was a win. That was a win-win. So they went in just for short term, and then they ended up doing a, uh, a longer lease. So that's where I come in right. with the longer lease. Is that I would be providing the moving ready solution, so that which would be a fully furnished, you know, office space or fully outfitted space, providing many things that I did in the res- luxury residential condominium, mm-hmm. where we had a sales center and things like that, where we were so helping to you know, facilitate the sales of a luxury uh, condominium building prior to it even being constructed or the, the property even being available to, to move in. So we would be doing the same thing in commercial spaces and helping landlords to rent these spaces and to rent them quickly and uh, to help them to identify who the top 10 potential tenants would be. Wow, that's amazing. I, I like that idea because, one, if you look at some of these, especially, and I, here living in New York City, especially lately, I, you know, you know, usually when I go to work or wherever I got to do, you know, I'm reading or, or listening to my iPhone. But when I do look up once in a while, look out the window from a, you know, from a bus, I'm seeing in certain parts of, of the city where you got all these store closings. And I just think it just adds, I hate to say misery to the neighborhood, but it, you know, in a way it does because you're going to see homeless people uh, sleeping in front of the, the that storefront. So yep. because of what you're doing and hopefully promoting, you know, businesses in the area, so these landlords are getting tax breaks by not re-renting or if a building is empty but it hasn't been torn down. So these landlords are getting tax breaks and the city is allowing that. So in other words, if I see 10 buildings that are boarded up and they haven't been knocked down or even attempted to be fixed in 10 years, is that the landlords yeah. are profiting somehow? Yeah, because it's like there's no real motivation for them to lease the space. So in other words, they're just going to hold out. They're just going to hold on, you know, leave it, you know, abandoned and, and, and empty until a really, you know, you know, an American Express or a bit, very big tenant comes in. Or they just let, let it sit there empty because they're going to be able to, at the end of the year, they're going to be able to take the tax break. So they're not really motivated. So now the city's stepping in and saying, this is the article that was just published in um, uh, the Commercial Observer this week, that now, you know, Mario Cuomo, Governor Mario Cuomo and uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio are now finding ways to change that, to say, no, you can't just take a tax break and leave this because it's, it's ultimately affecting the neighborhood. And that's what people traditionally in New York City, before it was all, everything was gentrified and everything, was all about the neighborhood. You move into a neighborhood. But not just because it's a multi-million dollar condominium and not just because it's, you know, it has all the amenities in the building and you, you know, you lease a, a long-term commercial uh, space for your office in an area, you know, not just because of the building itself, but because of the neighborhood and the retail stores and what's available down in the neighborhood. That's why. So you can't just do that. So, yes, on one hand, it's greedy landlords, but then on the other side, it's also, you know, companies like Amazon, the online shopping businesses. That's why a lot of the retail businesses have been moving 
They've been moving not just because of the, the rent has been going up and the, the landlords are getting greedy with the rent and not willing to negotiate, you know, but uh, it's also because of online business. It's also because of technology. It's, this has affected the way that we work. You can work from your mobile device. You don't even really need an office. It's like a virtual office. So you see many yeah. people working out of their homes and from the beach and you know, all over the world you can work. So it doesn't matter where you are, really. So that also has impacted, you know, this abandonment of the retail. So the combination between those two two things, I think, is really what's leaving the city. And, you know, it, it's going to be like escape from New York if they leave it like that. So, you know, yeah. it's good that the city and the city, you know what I mean? It's good that the city yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know what I mean? And uh, find them or take away their tax rates or whatever. But landlords are going to have to now start to look at it at this and say, okay, maybe we have to start lowering our prices. Maybe we have to start offering incentives. Maybe we have to start offering, you know, the build-out credits. Maybe we need to do something like what Stephanie's bringing to us, which is a move-in ready solution because there's company like we work, companies like we work who are providing, you know, they're renting and leasing these large spaces and they're starting to do their own buildings now. Um, which is ultimately w- what my goal is, to once I get this off the ground with the Move and Ready Solutions, is I'm going to take that money that I earn from all of those profits and put it into my own developments and buy my own buildings and implement these types of things in my, for, my, for myself. So I'll have my own office building with my own, you know, open houses and, and ways of attracting uh, potential tenants. Yeah, I, for me personally, I, I hate to see that because to me, one, I'm seeing people losing their jobs, and two, like I said, in the neighborhoods, depending, I mean, even downtown in Manhattan in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, you'll see one, or two, it seems like almost every other block you see one or two storefronts that are empty. And, you know, then who knows how long it will take before you see a homeless person sleeping in front of that, you know? And well, well, I think I'm, down in the, I'm down in the financial district, and there's homeless people on every single abandoned building down yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. So, it, it obviously, with the uh, move-in ready solutions that you're providing, you're not, you're, not only are you helping out uh, future tenants, but you're also helping out some of those landlords that do want to see that extra money coming in. And, and if, like you said, if, if uh, De Blasio and Cuomo are working towards not giving these owner an incentive to not rent out, hey, what the hell? I could have this building, you know, close for 10 years. I'm going to get a tax break. I mean, I think that would be a great thing and a great solution once you definitely get this program up and running if you haven't already. We, for me, I want to see the city uh, thrive. And I want to see people get jobs. I hate when people lose their jobs for no reason because the owners are getting re- uh, greedy. Exactly. And they're losing their jobs for all kinds of reasons, you know. Yeah. As we just so, said, you know, it's but. Yeah, I'm sorry. I need to talk. So obviously, you know, you stated where you see your company going. But how do you see in the next couple of years? If if that's maybe is that too early to predict, or maybe in the next six months, where do you see yourself going with moving uh, ready solutions? What's your goal? Well, I've been working on this uh, concept for for a while before even before this article came out in the in the Commercial Observer. So can you imagine how? how pleasantly surprised I was when they said that they were going to do this because it's very hard to approach landlords and try to, you know, especially if they don't have any motivation to do things, you know, to pay for things like parties and to pay for things, you know, to, to give uh, incentives and to give, you know, concessions to potential tenants. It's very, very difficult. Traditionally, it's very, very difficult to get the landlords to commit to paying paying anything. So, you know, we're ready to, we're getting ready to roll this out. I guess, you know, I don't know how long, this, you know, this, uh, what, how long the city is going to take in order to, uh, to implement this. But I'm, we already started talking to landlords and we've already started getting, putting our feelers out with other commercial real estate brokers and everybody seems to think that it's, uh, it's a good idea. So. You know, we'll have to try it out. We'll have to we'll have to see, you know, how it's going to go. And hopefully within the next six months, you know, we'll have the program fully uh, rolled out. I'm in a little bit of a pause right now because I'm reinstating my, my real estate license. So um, right. I'm doing my 75-hour course all over again after uh, 12 years. So I, I had to do it because I unfortunately let my license expire. So I have to do this 75 hours now. When I did it, I think it was yeah. like 40 or 45 hours. Yeah, no, it was, it was I think, because I, I took my license – out in 2008, and I think it was 40 hours or something like that. Then I think within six yeah. months after I finished, it went to 75. I'm like, what? And uh, I let my license expire, so and I pretty much, I don't mind, I wasn't going to get uh, into being a real estate agent anyway. So, okay, so we're looking at ways to help out the landlords and obviously the tenants. Like you said, you know, you got maybe an America Express or a Starbucks or even a mom-and-pop store trying to get in. Hopefully, you know, if this 
with de, uh, de Blasio and Cuomo getting this incentive out, not only for, for the landlords, but just for people in general, just saying, like, hey, you know what, they're looking to work with us. For the neighborhood. I think that's a good... For the neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. For the neighborhood. And, and, yeah. And that's It'll go back. It'll go point. back. Start opening up your mind, landlords. Start opening up your mind to the mom and pop. That's what made this city famous. They drove them out. Now we're going to have to come back in. And you're going to drive them back in. <laughs> so We're going to drive them back in because people, it's starting to look like 1970s New York out there. There's so many abandoned, <laughs> so many storefronts that are not leased that it's starting to remind me of the 70s in New York. I remember that. I remember, you know, neighborhoods, you know, you have garbage all over. Yeah, and I, I definitely don't want to see that again because uh, folks in the 80s here, in New York City, especially in the Grand Central, Times Square area, it was a dump. Little by little, you started getting uh, investors here, and all of a sudden now it's the biggest tourist attraction probably in New York City. So, Stephanie, exactly. now that you, you're working on your real estate license, talk about that. Like, how is it getting back into the into school again, so to speak? <laughs> how, how did that How did that hit you when you said, oh, shoot, i got to go back to school? <laughs> well, I, you know, I love um, – Really, I love uh, continuing education. I'm always uh, educating myself. I don't know everything. I don't think anybody knows everything. And I think it's really important to keep the mind active and, and going because we, we should always always be learning. What I'm most happy about this time around, even though it's double the amount of hours, I get to do it online now in the comfort of my own home, whereas I used to have to go down to the real estate school and sit there That's in the right. class, you know, and, and do the, you know, the old school way of sitting, sitting down in the class and having to go through taking notes with a pen, you know, trying to recall all of that massive amount of real estate information, which especially if you've never, if you know nothing about real estate and you're just going in for your license for the first time, can be overwhelming. So now you've got the, you know, the luxury of you know, being at the comfort of your own home and doing it on online and doing it on a laptop. So, you know, I'm really enjoying it. And it's, it's forcing me to, you know, relearn things that I had forgotten about and also yeah. to new, th new things because it's 75 hours and so now it's double. So there's a lot that has happened in the last 12 years in real estate. So it's keeping me up to date as to what, what's happening uh, in the industry. So I'm really excited about it and I'm, I'm really enjoying the process. No, listen, congratulations that, you know, you're going back, you're going to get your real estate license, and, you know, with this program that you're implementing, I, I really think it's going to work. I think it's a great idea. I definitely, you know, in the show notes, I want to definitely talk about more about the Move and Ready Solutions. I definitely want to find Thank that you. article on the Commercial Observer because I think that's important, so I got to get a link to that. So for you, you know, as your career is progressing and you've been doing this for a few years, what is one or two things that you do every day to ensure your success? What is it that drives you? What makes Stephanie Badillo get out of bed? <laughs> just the problem solving. You know, just always looking for ways to, you know, new problems, finding solutions to, to new problems. You know, what are the problems? What are the solutions? Educating myself every day, making sure that I'm on top of my game, that I understand, you know, how the interior design business works, how the architectural business works, how the real estate industry works, you know, just keeping myself, you know, abreast of these things every single day, you know, coming up with ideas, writing them down, implementing them, you know, just constantly, you know, staying away from the haters and the gossip and the rumors and all of that stuff too. I mean, mm -hmm. that can throw you off your path. So I, I don't let any of that affect me. You know, unless you know me or my family, you know, the people who are closest to me really know, you know, what my heart is and things like that. So I really, you know, just keep forging forward and trying to be innovative, be innovative. And, and that was actually what my high school yearbook said because I, the head of my class, I'm in high school, and that was it. It was, it was called Innovations, and that's who I am. I'm an innovator. I, I'd like to think of myself as an innovator. And that's how I uh, survive, and that's how I keep myself relevant, and that's how I keep growing, and that's how I keep pushing myself to learn and for things to not get boring and, you know, stale. Right. No, and uh, can you, um, before we move on to the next segment, can you talk about a little bit about the haters? And, and, and folks, if you don't know what that means, that, that means that people are not backing up Stephanie or they're talking, you know, BS about her. And Stephanie, obviously, just keep it moving. So can you talk more about that? Like, how you personally, how do you deal with that then? You just keep it, like I said, you just keep it moving, you ignore them. But how can other people do that then? What would you be a suggestion? 
I, I don't want to believe spot, in your, but... <laughs> Yeah, you, and you, have, you, have, you have to believe in yourself and you have to have a positive uh, mentality in order to be successful, I think. You know, and I, I don't think that I'm successful. I am striving to be successful every day. And, and as long as I keep that in my mind that I'm striving to be successful, I just, that keeps the fire under my butt and that keeps me pushing myself to be better, to grow better, to one day have my name on a building that says the DO, you know, and, you know, that's where, you know, my vision, my creative vision in my mind, just looking forward and not backward and not, not allowing people who uh, are talking and gossiping about you or rumors or whatever is going around because that's always going to happen. That's been happening since we were children in, in the sandbox and it's going to happen until you're 900 years old. So you just have to learn how to not let it affect you and at times it can, it can, you know, and, you know, what they say, new level, new devil or or, you know, it's lonely at the top or all of these other things that are out there. But, you know, there is there is truth to it. It is true to it. More, more money, more problems is another one. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. You, you, know, so, <laughs> you know, so you just have to, it's just something that you have to train yourself. And I think that that's what I've done. I've trained myself to, to block out the noise. Oh, no. I mean, I, I, I love that advice. Just block out the noise. So besides reading your current real estate salesperson license book. What other books do you like to read or recommend? <laughs> you know, that's that's. I was thinking about that because I saw that on the, one of the list of uh, on the questions that you provided me with. And I said, books? Well, I haven't read an actual book in forever. I can't remember the last okay. book, honestly. I think it was Eat, Pray, oh, Love. Audio. Was the last book I read. audio? But, uh, yeah, no, I don't really read books. I, what I do is I like the news. So I like um, like the Commercial Observer and the Real Deal, and, you know, all of these trade, you know, magazines and articles, you know, because, again, I'm really into education and learning. So I'm always looking. To, if I do reading, that's what that's the type of reading that I'm doing, is educational types of reading and, and getting to know, you know, what's happening in the world, what's happening in the market, what's happening, you know, and how that affects my industry. You know what I mean? Right. You know, how does Amazon.com, you know, ruling the world affect real estate in my industry? You know what I mean? So, like, those that's the type of reading that I do. Okay, so the Commercial Observer, the real deal. Yeah, I've heard of the Commercial Observer. I never read it, but now because you're definitely on my show today, I'm definitely going to look at it. I definitely want to look at that article about the Blasio and uh, Cuomo. The real deal, yeah, I get it always sent to my phone or my tablet or my desktop, and I always, depending on the article, I like to read it. Okay, so, Stephanie, as we're about to end the show, where can people find you besides the Badillo Development Group? Any other places you want them to look? Uh, yeah, right now I'm redoing all of my uh, social network, so uh, I'll be putting that on my Badillo Development Group. Uh, dot com website shortly, but you could also go to my LinkedIn. You can search me uh, on LinkedIn uh, at Stephanie Badillo, and I post articles there. Or you can, you know, click on it, and uh, we can be friends. So I think that's really the two avenues that I'm I'm using right now is both my website and uh, LinkedIn. Okay, well, that sounds good, Stephanie. We could we probably could have talked another fourteen hours. And I think I would have enjoyed it because of the fact I'm fascinated with what you're doing, what you're creating, and you're looking to help people, both sides, which is landlords and tenants. Like I said, I've, I'm going to probably definitely have you back once your um, moving ready solution definitely gets up and running. Stephanie, I, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Thank you so much for being on Peter Peter Real Estate. And before I let you go, any words of wisdom? I'm going to put you on the spot, young lady. Ah, oh, boy. Words of wisdom. I did. I put it on the spot, guys. <laughs> yeah, you did. You put me on the spot. Mo money, mo problems. No. <laughs> just just be be true to yourself. Be true to who you are. Don't let the naysayers uh, affect you. You know, keep persevering. You know, work hard, but, you know, play hard, too. Don't sacrifice, you know, all the fun in your life because life is short and you want to get out there and enjoy it, too. So you don't want to, like, uh, obsess. But at the same time, you know, stay focused and, uh, you know, try to find the problem that needs to be solved, you know. And if you can find a solution and it works, then you've, you've hit a home run. Perfect ending to a great story that you gave us. So, Stephanie, again, thank you so much for being on Peter Peter Real Estate. I appreciate it, and we'll definitely keep in touch. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, Willie. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Now, a word from one of our partners. Can't afford to pay someone to do your website? Well, how about using Weebly? Your website is waiting. It's time to launch. 
Tell your story with a beautiful website, online store or blog with Weebly's drag and drop website builder, integrated e-commerce platform and responsive themes. You can build a professional website without any technical experience. Go to peer to peerrealestatecom forward slash Weebly. That's peer to number two peerrealestate.com forward slash Weebly. Thank you. Well, folks, that was Stephanie Badillo of BadilloDevelopmentGroup.com. That's B-A-D-I-L-L-O, DevelopmentGroup.com. You can find her there, ask her questions, talk about her interior design studio. Also, she's going to be coming up, her and the team, with a solution to help out landlords and storefront tenants work together. So definitely look out for that in the next uh, maybe few months or less. You never know. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening to Peer to Peer Real Estate. Uh, I'm Willie Morales. You know, I appreciate you guys listening. Also, when you get a chance, if you go to iTunes and look for us at Peer to Peer Real Estate Podcast, leave a review, subscribe, tell, tell us how we can get better, how I can get better. Also, you can look for me at peer to peer real estate.com. That's peer to number two peer real estate.com. And before I go, remember, guys, keep up your pace. Keep the momentum going. Good things will happen. Do not give up. It's, if you have a dream, go for it. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. There are many haters out there. Just stay away from those people and keep your momentum. You'll achieve your goals if you do. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. Thank you so much again for listening to Peter Peter Real Estate. I'm Willie Morales. Until next time, thanks everyone and have a great, great day. Bye.